Welcome to this week's episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. This is a hypothetical case. A four-year-old male with no past medical history is found down by his parents, brought in by ambulance, CPR in progress. Here are the vitals that you have, a temperature of 35.5 and a POC glucose of 72. You know what to do. This is cardiac arrest. Get the patient over to your gurney. Continue compressions. You need access, whether it's IV or IO. Get the patient attached to the monitor, or if you want, sometimes I'll leave these patients attached to the core pack of EMS to help minimize interruptions and compressions. You take a look at your monitor, you take a look at your core pack, and this is what you have with no pulse. Or, let's say it looks like this. We're talking about ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia in a pediatric cardiac arrest. The key with VF and pulseless VT, same as with adults, defibrillation. Starting point is 2 joules per kilogram, moving up to 4 joules per kilogram. And your epinephrine dose, whether given IV or IO, is 0.01 mg per kg. If you give it through the endotracheal tube, which you can do, it's 0.1 mg per kg. Now what about your antiarrhythmics? Amiodarone, lidocaine, magnesium. For amio, it's 5 mg per kg. Lidocaine, 1 mg per kg. Mag, 25 to 50 mg per kg. Pediatric cardiac arrest doesn't happen all that often, and that's why we have some cognitive offloading tools. Things like Braslo tapes or any number of different pediatric scales that you can lay out when the patient arrives that help estimate the weights and the doses required during cardiac arrest. Or you can use something along these lines. This is your medications already laid out in syringes. As you can see, there's a color-coded syringe that matches that same color coding that we use on the tape for estimating weight and dosage. Remember your H's and T's. I know this seems kind of silly, but in the pediatrics, they're less likely to have multiple comorbidities, and so these reversible causes are very important, especially hypoxia, and then I'll add acidosis, in terms of hypercapnia. Most pediatric cardiac arrests are respiratory in nature, which means it's either hypoxia or hypercapnia. Now, this hypothetical case, the hypothetical hospital stay, you obtain ROSC after a great resuscitation. There's perfect pediatric post-arrest care. is admitted to the PICU and discharged completely neurointact. Our take-home points is that this is terrible. This situation, thankfully, doesn't arise all that often, but it will happen. So you have to know your stuff. If this isn't something you see frequently, you need to have some cognitive offloading tools, whether it be the tape, the identified syringes, some way to help you make sure that you're getting the correct doses to your pediatric patients. Remember those H's and T's. I know it sounds silly. It's on your ACLS and your PALS tests. But for the pediatric cardiac arrest, these things become more important. Thanks for listening. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Weir underscore Alec or subscribe to this channel for more information from Morning Report Emergency Medicine. Keep your eyes out for those interesting cases.